Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Hello, I'm Pastor George Pearsons. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Brother Copeland preached at a meeting called Word Explosion Military Salute. And during that meeting, we had some powerful word that was being taught, and we were also honoring our military, as we do right now. All of you who are military or retired, we honor you. Now, with all that's going on in the world around us, we need to hear from God. So get your Bibles and join Brother Copeland as he begins today's study about the power of the love of God. I want to talk to you about love, the secret to success, the God kind of love, the agape love, not the filial love. Agape, the God kind of love, is love on purpose. It doesn't have it doesn't need, it's not necessary for it to feel good about anything. God loves because He is love. And love is good. But Brother Copeland, this is a military meeting. I'm well aware of that. And that's that is from that angle that we will be talking about this. And particularly those of you that uh, are in the military now or planning to be in the military, listen up. Listen up. And this could very easily help some people that have already been in the military and have seen some nasty stuff. So, the first thing we'll look at is the soldier's psalm. Well, we're going to look at two things together. The 91st Psalm. Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, I'm going to do that from the classic Amplified tonight. And um, now don't read, just listen. I'll probably put it up on the screen, but uh, uh, just, just listen here. He who dwells, lives in the secret place of the Most High, who is love. Amen? He is love. He has faith. He is love. Shall, he will remain stable and fixed under the shadow of Shaddai, whose power no foe can withstand. We already there. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, but it's no good unless you say something. I will say of the Lord. Yes. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. On him I lean and rely and in him I confidently trust for then he'll deliver me. Yes. He will. I said, he will deliver me. 
No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He will. He is love. He loves me and he will. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to go over here to the book of Numbers. This is the soldier's promise. A lot of people, chap, you know, over the years, I've had personal experience with this, uh, a man very, very close, uh, Keith Kerber, Colonel Keith Kerber, uh, uh, pastors in Wasilla, Alaska, special forces, a bad pastor. <laughs> He's a pastor that'll kill you if he has to. Yes, sir. To defend the Constitution. That's right. That's right. Now, we were there when he was about to be deployed. And so he said, no, all right, you know, here, here we go. So I talked to him about this and I said, Keith, now there's record of this. And we discussed the record there that happened in World War I and then again in World War II, where commanders taught their units the 91st Psalm. And you had to be able to quote it like you did the orders of the day. You had to be, I mean, if he called for verse five, you better come up with verse five. Hit a brace and say it until you just ingrained it in people, just ingrained it. He, and, and, and he said, you know, I'm taking over a unit that has had a, a lot of casualties, really too many. And he said, I'm going to do that. And so I said, well, as soon as you get back, let me hear what happened. And well, I didn't know he was going to call me at three o'clock in the morning, but <laughs> he had just, I mean, he just got back to the stateside the phone rang there by my bed. And he said, it's Keith. <laughs> and, well, hey, Colonel, what, what happened, man? He said, it worked just like you said. We had no casualty. We had zero casualty. But he said, everybody there memorized that 91st yeah. Psalm. And he said, we, hey, we, that, it was a t absolute for the whole two years. Amen. Nobody got a scratch. <laughs> but he said, now, he said, Kenneth, I, I, I have a problem though. He said, when I left and another commander took my place, he said, they began to have casualties again, not as many as they had. I said, Keith, that's simple. Those guys were saying that and memorized that because you ordered them to. Right. Now there's some of them were saying it because you said to, but it still worked. That's right. Now you got a bunch of lazy ones that didn't believe it. Now, he didn't say this. This is just me. I expect those were the casualties. There were some of them stayed with it. But that's so easy to understand. It isn't even funny. It's the Word of God. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. And in Him I do trust, and I'm about to say so. And then He will deliver me. And, it, and when, you, when you go on down, then you, you come to the place where he says, he has placed his love upon me. Yes. Now listen, Michael Aiken, mm -hmm. he has known my name. <laughs> He's known my name. He's known my covenant. He's a covenant man. And I'll keep him. And with long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's a soldier. But now, wait a minute. 
He cannot, he cannot be quoting that 91st Psalm and then the next breath take God's name in vain. There's no way that's going to work. Well, oh, Brother Copeland, I just don't see, I just don't see, well, because you don't see doesn't mean anything. Now, what about David? The warrior king. Lot of combat. Lot of combat. You went in, you think he just got in all that and just went and just, just lost the power of his tongue? No. David wrote 75 of the Psalms. Here's what he said. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. When Absalom was, was after him, trying to kill him, you know what he said? I just lay down and slept. He was really afraid, wasn't he? Then he said, you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety in my sleep is sweet. <laughs> they get after me, I just go to sleep in God. But he kept praise in his mouth. He did some ugly stuff, but he kept his mouth. This is man after God who is love's own heart. Because when he missed it, he just fall on his knees and he kept praise in his mouth even in times of awesome combat. When he came against Goliath, now Goliath had a nasty mouth and he cursed David. Well, that was his final words. Things didn't work out too well for him. So David didn't say, I'm coming after you and I'm going to kill you. That's not what he said. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. He came in the name. He came in the name. And the Lord God of hosts, Lord of Sabaoth, is the Lord of the angelic armies of God. Learn to go to war surrounded by angels mm -hmm. and depend on them and know how to depend on them. Know how to look toward the Lord of Sabaoth and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. So now let's talk about that's the soldier's song. Let's talk about the soldier's promise. Um, I, I've, never, I've never heard too much about the soldier's promise, but it's huge. We have any, any people in here that were in Southeast Asia? Okay. Let me come around here. Let me visit with you a little bit. Now, first of all, welcome home, soldier. Yes. Now back there then, my microphone wasn't big enough to make much noise, but I, I did the best right. I could. Right. Now, here is the answer. This is the answer to a combat soldier, particularly infantrymen, Army, Marine Corps, I mean, you know, 
down in the weeds. This is it. And Moses said unto them, if you will do this thing. Well, I'll put there, if you don't forget it, because you're just, I mean, you're just a mud pounder like everybody else. But if you'll do this thing, if you will go armed before the Lord to war, that changes the whole formula. Armed before the Lord, answering to him with every word, every action, every thought. I've heard this, I've known of it personally. Remorse and guilt because you're the only one left. That's no time for guilt. That's time for joy. But now here's the, here's the, here's the key. And will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he has driven out his enemies before him. You're just the tool. Now, when I was in the army <laughs> 65 years ago, this coming January, we were, I mean, the M1 Garand was our weapon. Heavy rascal, a little over nine pounds without the bayonet. <laughs> it's just, it's a club of wood, brother, but it's a good weapon. It was good. But it was nothing but a stick without me. Just a big heavy club without the soldier. The soldier is no good if he or she takes all the responsibility upon themselves, that just won't work. You and I are not equipped to handle that. Yeah. We weren't built for war. We were created by a God of love, but he's also a God of war. And it's when the Prince of Peace becomes the God of war, when mean, unreasonable, ungodly, immersive, doggy people get to the place where local law enforcement can no longer handle it. Then somebody has to call the soldier. It takes a soldier to step in there and make the difference. It takes a Marine to step in there and make the difference. It takes an airman. It takes a whole crew of people to make the difference. I believe in war. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God for it. I do not believe in going to war and fight a war you can't win. But then that's not my decision as a soldier. Now listen to this. And the land be subdued before the Lord, not before the soldier, but before the Lord who is love. Then afterward, listen, you shall return. <laughs> ah, 
You're coming home, Bubba. I'll tell you, you do it this way and you're coming home. And you're not coming home all messed up either. You go to bed and sleep like a baby. Yeah, somebody said, yeah, I cried all night long. No, no, that's not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look. You shall return and you will be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land shall be your procession before the Lord. Amen. Guiltless. Yes. Guiltless. Come on. That's, that's where the devil just rips it to people is, is, is be feeling guilty. Even when you did a good job, come home feeling guilty and he just tear you all to pieces. No, you went before the Lord. You did it his way and you did it because he needed you and you will return and you will be guiltless. Thank you. Thank now you'll have to contend for it. And when the devil tries to put it on you, just put your foot down and say, no, I'm a soldier, not a killer. I'm guiltless because I did it God's way. I came against his enemy. This is his nation. The first act of Congress in this country Our president, George Washington, said, you will be our God and we will be your people. God never forgets a covenant. I don't care if it is nearly 300 years old. What difference does that make to God? 300 years is 10 seconds to him. That's still in his face. And I'm glad because <laughs> yeah. yeah. we've had some pretty goofy stuff over the last 245 years. But no enemy will be able to take this country down until he's done with it. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Amen. 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 Now, now that we have that, that part settled, we can continue to explore that the, the God kind of love is the secret and it is the gateway to success. John D. Rockefeller was born a very poor family, but he had a Baptist mother and she insisted that he tithe on whatever he got in his hands. He said, if I hadn't tithed on that first million, I never would have on the second. But he continued and continued and continued to give. He was dying of ulcers, living on crackers and milk. And he thought, he was 50 some years old. And he said that he, he lay in the bed, couldn't sleep, pain. What is it, and, and prayed like this, what is it, I have all this money now and I'm about to die what is it that I have not done yet? And the more he thought about it and the more he prayed about it, he began to realize, I've never tried to give it all away. And that's what I'm going to do. Did you ever hear of the March of Dimes? Of course you did. But the old John Rockefeller laid a mile of dimes 
Not, not some 50 some years old. He got healed. He laid a mile of dimes. I think it's right down Fifth Avenue in New York. It was the way the March of Dimes was born. To find a cure. Hallelujah. Why? Because a man decided to give and he got healed. will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. As a born-again believer, you have a Comforter. You've been given the Holy Spirit. During this time of turmoil, upheaval, and stress, you're able to stand in faith, knowing that God has a word for you, and God has a word for your nation. In the book, One Word from God Can Change Your Nation by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Happy Caldwell, and John G. Lake, you can be reminded that you're on the victory side of all the things happening around you. Anchor your soul and be the light in the darkness. You can have hope knowing the Almighty God has a blood covenant with you and your family. When we're confronted by impossible situations in this world, we have a covenant right to factor in Jesus. Take your stand on the victory side and immerse yourself in the Word of God. Learn how God can change even the worst situation. No matter what is happening around you, delve into God's Word and prepare for an awakening to God. God's love is the door to a life without fear. Brother Copeland said today the soldier's promise in Numbers chapter 32 is the answer to the combat soldier. Love removes the fear. When God's love is put into action, that's when there is peace and healing. Share this broadcast with your family and your friends. Go to kcm.org to watch. Kenneth and Gloria have a gift that they want to give to you. It's a book, and it's called One Word from God Can Change Your Nation. This is a book for every believer around the world. Wherever you live, you believe God for your nation. You have the spiritual influence through the power of prayer to change your government and the politics of your nation. We pray for unity and the awakening of God in our nation. To request your free book, go to kcm.org. Now, speaking about our nation, we're going to be at the Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign starts this week, November 11th through the 13th. Brother Copeland and Jerry Savelle will be preaching the word there. Set aside these three days to become totally immersed in the Word of God. Don't let distractions pull you away from God's plan for you. Until tomorrow, remember this, that we love you, God loves you, and Jesus is Lord. The Believer's Voice of Victory is brought to you by the partners and friends of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. To download or request a free copy of the broadcast, go to kcm.org. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.